Good morning. This is our weekly encouraging message we want to give you, especially for the days in which we live. And uh, last week we talked about focusing our faith, that, that our life, our, our, our faith life be focused and not interfered with by all the bad news and the fear of this world, but we stay focused on the Word of God, keep our faith focused on the Lord. And today we're going to talk about focus your heart, focus your heart. So let's, let's go to prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our Lord Jesus, we come to you now. And Lord, we live in a world full of distractions. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to keep our heart, our mind, our eyes upon you, Lord, upon your word, and to listen to the voice of your spirit, to be led by the spirit of God in these last days, and keep our heart focused. In Jesus' name, amen. So in these last days, and especially in these last days, well, the Lord hasn't changed. He's always been the same, and he desires, what he desires is to get our attention and to keep our attention. And, and if, you're a, if you're a child of God, if you're one of God's people, that's what he desires more than anything, is to have your attention, and that your attention stay with him, not to drift this way and that way, not to get distracted. Especially in these last days before his return, there are things that the Lord wants to drop into your heart, wants to speak to you, to give you comfort and peace peace in a chaotic world. Unfortunately, there's too much of our personal lives and even our church life that can be misfocused and misspent by distractions, by uh, busyness, by um, the, just the concerns of life. Distraction is one of the greatest tools of the devil to keep people's focus away from what God desires for them. That's why we want to stay focused. That's why we want to keep our heart focused so that we will listen and hear what God desires for us. He's not going to give us anything bad. He has the best planned for us, but we want to stay on track. We want to stay in tune with Him. God's looking for those who are willing to both seek and see what He's doing by His Spirit in our world today so we can pray and partner with him. And that's so important. Pray and partner with the Lord. You know, um, this has been God's will from the beginning. Remember he walked in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve in the garden. He wanted to, he wanted to fellowship with them. He wanted to, to hear what they had to say. He wanted them to hear what he had to say. And he wanted to partner with them in the management of the things on the face of the earth. Pray, pray in alignment with God's will and his purpose. When we pray, we need to pray in, in alignment with God's will and his purpose. And we go back, and you've heard this verse from me before, we go back to Matthew 6 and 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done. This is out of the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray that way, we're asking God to have our will and his will aligned together. So, in us, what, whatever, it, on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And we want God's will in us, in our life. Alignment with his will and his purpose is what we want. In Ephesians 6 and 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And there, praying prayer, supplication, uh, with perseverance, supplication for all the saints. Prayer is so important, and our prayer needs to be focused with His will. We want, we want to partner with Him, partner with Him in fulfillment of His divine plan. God has a plan. He's got a plan for the face of the earth. He's got a plan for mankind, and, and believe it or not, He has a plan specifically for your life, and we want to partner with God in the plan that he has for us. In, let's go to Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and uh, beginning, uh, let's, go to, let's go to verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. We are aligned with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
The word together is used three times there. That, that word together means we're to be one with Christ. We're to be aligned with Christ. And it says, uh, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in, which, in, in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So he has plans for us now. He, he has plans for us in the ages to come. We need to get used to being in alignment with his will, in alignment with his purpose for our life, being one with Christ. That's part of what it's like to be one with Christ. Remember again, going back to the beginning, the creation of Adam and Eve, uh, God had a plan to have fellowship with mankind, to speak to mankind, to listen to mankind, and to be aligned together in his plan that mankind would be obedient to the plan and the purpose that he has for them. Let's, let's go back to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 22. God wants us to partner with him. He has, he has a plan for our life today. He has a plan for his church on the face of the earth today, just like he had a plan for Israel. And look what it says here in Ezekiel, and this is chapter 22, verse 30. It says, so I sought for a man among them, who would make me a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. God is always looking for somebody that will stand in the position that he has for them and to be in alignment with his will and his purpose. But his eyes looked over all the earth and, and for, for these who, through whom he can do mighty works. That's basically what it's saying here in Ezekiel uh, 22 and 30, that God is looking, his eyes look over all the earth for those who, who will do his work to stand in agreement and alignment and partner with him in his work. Now let's go to uh, Second Chronicles chapter 6. And this is Solomon when the temple was just about complete here and before the dedication of the temple, it says, But God will indeed dwell with men on earth, on the earth. Behold heaven and the earth, and the, behold heaven and the, and the heaven of heavens can, cannot contain you. How much less this temple, Solomon's talking to God about how awesome he is, which he's, no, how much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be open toward this temple day and night, toward the place where you said you would put your name, and that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. Now Solomon, Solomon was praying about the temple in the Old Testament, and God had promised he would put his name on that place. That would be a place where his people would seek him. In the New Testament, we're told that the believer in Christ is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So Solomon, when he's, when he's praying, your eyes may be open toward this temple today and, and day and night and toward the place where you said you would put your name. So we, we are the temple. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we need to appeal to God. To, to, to the place where he would put his name. What is, where has he put his name today? He has put his name on the church, the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are called Christians. You are, the, you are the temple where God puts his name today. He wants to dwell with us and partner with us in his work. Let his work be our work. That should be our will, our desire, to let God's work be our work. The big question is when he does return, will he find you faithful? What the, what the master of the house desires for us is to find us faithful, doing his work, being aligned with his will and his purpose on the face of the earth. Remember, we're the temple and we've believed on him and invited him, the Lord Jesus Christ, into our life to be master of our life. And let's go back to um, Matthew Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 45. And this is talking about the faithful servant and the evil servant. Jesus liked to teach in parables. 
and says, Who then is faithful and a wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? And the Christian, you are ruler over the household of God. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, finds will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to, to, to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards, and the master of the servant will come on that day when he is not looking for him at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint his, his portion with the hypocrites and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, so we have to be responsible as believers in Christ to be partnered with the Lord, partner in his will and his purpose and what he wants us to be doing on the face of the earth. And there's nothing else matters. Focus your heart on the Lord. Focus on him. Nothing else matters. You belong to him. Do not let anything distract you to take your attention off the Lord. Keep your heart focused on the Lord. It's a matter of heart, of the heart. We have to keep our, our heart focused on the Lord and not let the distractions of this world turn us away from his plan, his purpose, and his will for our life. Let's close in prayer. Our Lord Jesus, there may be one listening today or they may, they may tune into this video in the weeks to come and they really don't understand what we're talking about. And Lord, it's all about, we've lived our, before we come to you, we live our life according to our own desires, according to the ways of this world. But when we come to you, Lord, we're asking you with godly sorrow, forgive us our sins, come into our heart and be Lord of our life. And beginning our walk with you, Lord, we want to begin this way and we want to continue this way that we be in, in a partnership with you and that we're aligned with your plan and purpose for the church on the face of the earth. And Lord, our heart be after your heart. Your plan and your will be our plan and our will. I pray for the church, even in the body of Christ, in the church, there are so many distractions. I pray that the church will come back into alignment, that our heart as the body of Christ would be focused on you, Lord, and not be distracted by the things of the world or even the things of the church, but to be focused on you, Lord Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day of worship tomorrow. God bless.